Uh, if you're still wondering, should you come to church or not, please, there is still time to make it. And uh, as well, we've got uh, heat because I know it's a little chilly outside. Let's go ahead and take a moment to uh, pray. Uh, ask that the Lord be with us and we'll sing a few songs. And then Gustavo is going to lead our lesson today. Uh, let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for you are good and your mercy endures forever. As we now take time to sing uh, songs of praise to you, Lord, above all, may you be glorified. Be with us, especially as we study. Help us to take heart what you want us to know and share it with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of jesus christ leave behind you regrets and mistakes come today there's no reason to wait jesus is calling bring your sorrows and trade them for joy from the ashes a new life is born jesus is calling The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. down before him for he is lord of all sing hallelujah christ is risen oh what a savior isn't he wonderful sing hallelujah Christ is risen, bow down before him, for he is Lord of all, sing hallelujah, Christ is risen, oh come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your 
cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. Jesus is calling. but a goodie number 262 in your hymn books there's a sweet there's a sweet sweet spirit in this place and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord there are sweet expressions on each face and I know they feel the presence of the Lord sweet Holy Spirit sweet heavenly dove stay right here with us fill us with your love and for these blessings Lift our hearts in praise Without a doubt we'll know That we've been revived When we shall leave this place When we shall leave this place There's a sweet, sweet spirit In this place And I know that it's a spirit sweet expressions on his face and I know they feel the presence of the Lord sweet Holy Spirit sweet heavenly dove stay right here with us filling us with your love and for these blessings we lift our hearts in praise without a doubt we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place father in heaven as we now turn our attention to the lesson study again please be with gustavo as he leads this discussion and as we especially discuss this most important topic help us lord to know what to, uh, to ask, to ask questions, and also, Lord, help us to find answers. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see you here, guys. We welcome the people online, too. My name is Gustavo, and I'll be leading the class today. My lucky day, yeah. So, um, how's everybody doing today? Again, we're expecting rain later on, but hey, it's a good thing. Go ahead. Say blessed. Blessed, yeah. We all blessed. We all blessed. Just the fact that we are up and running, it's a blessing. So um, today we're going to cover the lesson number two for a quarter. And uh, we're going to see what is really the fight about it. You know, last, um, last class... Well, we are covering the great controversy between God and, uh, and between good and evil. Okay, that's what we're covering this quarter. Okay. But this great controversy, if you really think about it, it covers the whole spectrum of the Bible. You know, it starts with Lucifer. We covered that last week. I don't know if you remember the class from Dr. Mario. So we cover uh, the fight on heaven. Uh -huh. Lucifer lies. Remember, he was, he has, is the liar, the deceiver, you know. So he has, uh, what else? Help me out, guys, here. The liar, the deceiver, the, the pride in him, and, and so on. Um, we also covered that we have a uh, reason for hope. And then Jesus Christ is our high priest in heaven right now. So, you know, and that was what we covered last week. But 
going back to the, the Bible, uh, the great controversy passes the whole um, uh, Bible. And, you know, we, we, we know that uh, he covered uh, Lucifer from, from the fall of heaven, his rebellion against God, to the restoration, okay, um, to the restoration of God's throne in the new heavens and the new earth. All of that is encompassed on the great controversy. And uh, we're, we're here, um, God restoration throne, and, uh, and the new heaven. We call, you know, it encompasses the, the, the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden to the promise to the Messiah, the coming of Christ, his perfect life, his death for humanity, his resurrection, his ascension to heaven, his high uh, priestly ministry, the early New Testament church, the apostasy in the Middle Ages, the Reformation, and, and why not also give the birth to our Adventist movement too? I mean, all of that is encompassed, you know, uh, on, on the great controversy. The, the central uh, issue for today, it is love or selfish or being selfish you know so that's what we're going to cover today and um, this is real between good and evil christ look with a prophetic eye in the future and we're going to cover that right now the prophetic eye of christ in the future okay and um, let me tell you Bible prophecy doesn't guess. It knows, you know, what's going to happen. And we're going to see in a minute why I'm saying that. Okay, the great controversy is the word not about tanks or arrows or it's about ideas. The great controversy. Um, weapons might lead you to your first death, if you will, if you're in war and, you know, you get hit by a bullet your history, but this is the first death only, okay? Now, the ideas is a different, and you, you wait for the resurrection, you sleep until the resurrection, if you are in Christ. But um, the ideas are kind of more dangerous, if you will, because you're talking about not the first death, you're talking about eternal life. So that's what, you know, that's, that's the word here. Yeah, wrong ideas about God will lead you to eternal death. This is why uh, this is what the enemy wants. He always um, he has always looked for that since the rebellion in heaven, and he tries to degrade the image of God all the time. The enemy, mm -hmm. and he can continue attacks God's image, but God already showed His real love, His image at the cross, okay? So no matter what the, 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 uh, Satan is trying to tell us about the image of God, we already know the image of God on the cross, an image of love for us, okay? Okay, go ahead. I think also prior to, to his redeeming sacrifice, uh, what occurred in heaven Mm -hmm. When he sees the rebellion, and instead of just ending that, he showed his great love by allowing sin to continue in its course so that it could be evident to all. He wasn't just a tyrant who said, okay, this isn't going to continue. I'm ending it. Yeah. So he did show his love even also then. Also in heaven. Mm -hmm. By no uh, acting like... He should have, I don't know, I guess, you know, <laughs> boom, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. yeah. Now, the questions for this uh, week is, how does God respond when Satan attacks his image and the image of the church? How are he going to respond? Okay, so we're going to cover three aspects today of how um, God responds when Satan tries to uh, tarnish the image of God and the church, okay? The first 
point that we're going to cover is when Satan attacks, God responds all the time, all the time. Remember um, Genesis 41? Yes, no. <laughs> okay, Genesis 41, it's about Pharaoh had a dream. Seven fat, healthy uh, cows. And then later on, he had 17 ugly cows. Then the following day, or the same night, he had this another dream with seven heads of grain and one stalk with every kernel well formed and plump, you know. And then uh, suddenly, seven more, more heads of grain, you know, wither with it by the east wind. Okay. Those dreams had a meaning. Remember the meaning? The meaning of that uh, dream? Yeah, seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. Okay. And um, what God did, uh -huh. how did he save his people? He, who interpreted the, the dream for him? Joseph. Joseph, Joseph interpreted <laughs> the, 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 the dream for him, okay? Yeah. And what do we know then the work of the seven uh, skinny, ugly cows? Who did that work? The enemy, Satan. And why are we saying that, guys? Why are we saying that? Because then the enemy did that. That's the outcome of his behavior. Yeah, I mean... How did, how, did, how did God created the world? Perfect. So in his mind, when God created the world, there was no seven ugly, skinny cows. And it was perfect. So we know that the enemy is at work all the time. Okay. So what did Joseph did? He interpreted the dream for Pharaoh, okay? Um, but uh, I forgot to write the note in 41. What did, what did Joseph say to, to, to Pharaoh? Joseph said, you know, I cannot interpret the dream for you, but there is a God in heaven that can do it. So Joseph, you know, Ask God to help him to do uh, the interpretation for him. So, yeah, he chose Joseph to interpret the dream and save many lives. So, see how God, Satan attacks with the famine, and God responds by saving thousands of lives. You know, thousands of lives because Joseph was able to uh, right. interpret the dream. Can you see? Go ahead. Uh. In other words, you're saying is that the Lord made provisions before it went there. Uh huh. In other words, he, even though Joseph, by circumstance of the brothers putting him into slavery, mm -hmm. uh, being sold, um, that in the midst of all that, it was God's plan. For the for them to be saved from and and why what is so important that he was uh, he, they were going to be saved the brothers. Um, okay, let's let's think about it. one of the brother. He well, yeah, and Judah was his brother too, mm -hmm. and remember the Messiah has to come from the from from the lineage of Judah too, mm -hmm. you know so. So, you know, God has a plan all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it was important. I mean, besides saving the, 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 his brothers, mm -hmm. how many people were saved for that, for the attack of Satan yeah. with, with the famine, you know? Mm -hmm. So, 
that's what you know we said then when satan attacks god's protects all the time something similar and this is this is a sad story guys something similar happened uh, uh, on the destruction of jerusalem remember what happened god wasn't um going to send an Roman army to kill the people in Jerusalem. He wasn't going to do it, mm -hmm. you know. The devil enticed, you know, Romans to do that. Mm -hmm. his, but his people had rejected him, okay? So you can say they reject Christ, Christ's protection, and Satan, and Satan is going to use that to his advantage because people rejected Christ. Okay, mm -hmm. Let's, uh, let us read Matthew 24, 15, and 16. What, what, this is what, what Jesus did for his people in Jerusalem before. Okay, so let's, uh, is anybody there? Matthew 24, 15, 16? Would you mind reading that? Matthew 24, 15, and 16. So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Okay. So did our Lord give an exit to people? A warning. A warning. And what was the warning? Run. Run. And this is, this is pretty amazing, guys, because by the year 66 AD, this happened maybe Jesus was 32 years old. This happened almost 30 years later, you know, the, the destruction of Jerusalem. But um, by the, I didn't know this, but by the year 66 AD, the Roman army commanded by Sistius Gallus marched to Jerusalem and sacked the city. You know, there was the assaged the city, you know, I mean, there was, but, you know, when they were ready to attack, they flew away, you know, and the army of Jerusalem chased them down. They were singing, hey, we defeat, we defeat the Romans and so on. So when you see that as a human and you see that the army of Jerusalem had a victory, you know, quotation marks, against uh, the Romans, because they, the city was already zooed, but they, they left, they, you know, they, they escaped completely. So, and if you see, then your army had a victory, do you think then you're going to flee to the mountains? You would feel safe. You feel safe. But all behold, what happened in 70, you know, four years later, okay, the army, the Roman army this time, uh -huh, by Titus, he was, uh -huh, he says here, uh, Jews went after them and they had a victory. So most of them said, we're going to the hills. It is absurd to go to the hills. We, 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 we defeated, you know, we are winning the war. But Jesus have told them to flee, you know. Some Christians did flee to the city of Pella, then they believed that that was gonna happen. They believed to the city of Pella. When the, Roman, when the Roman army, four years later, commanded by Titus, you know, came three years, four years later, three years later, according to the historian Flavius Josephus, about one million, one million people died and about 100,000 were taken captives, okay? No, uh, yeah, and no Christians. I, and like Jesus said, the temple was destroyed. Okay, who survives Satan attacks? The one who listened to Jesus. That is the real image of of, of Jesus saving his people. You know, the enemy can attack you when the you know when the enemy attacks. What Jesus does. Jesus protects, God protects. 
And that's what happened. See the relationship? Now, I have a question for you. Do you think that this is a foretell of what's going to happen to us? Yeah? No question about it. Yeah? I mean, if you are happy and having everything and so on, and these days, you say, hey, who, who needs Jesus, you know? But Jesus has already told us that we're supposed to be aware. I mean, and the enemy is going to attack at the end. But Jesus is going to protect us. If, as a conditional, too, if we give our heart to Jesus. Same thing that it happened when the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. Jesus warned them, flee. You know, but they thought that they were super, they defeated the army when the army in 66. But four years later, what happened? Boom. So whatever the Lord tells you, let's do it. <laughs> you know, that's our protection. Really, I mean, that's his image. It's a protector, you know. I mean, yeah, granted, you know, the, the lesson here says, God doesn't always stop to, or to, to bad things from happening when we make wrong choices. It's not going to, I mean, you know, he often allows to suffer the penalty of our wrong choices. I mean, and, and this is pretty true. God didn't cause the Romans to kill innocent children in Jerusalem at the time of the city was destroyed. Satan was responsible for those killings, not God. Because God has an image of love. Okay. So that's, that's pretty, to me, to, to me it's, it's pretty cool. And, it, and it's really, when you think about all the things that have happened in the past, you know, everything, the history of the world, and then it's one thing that is going to happen later, which is the coming of Christ, you know, you start thinking, oh, man, so many examples we have, then we really should focus, you know, on God. And then he's going to protect us, you know. I mean, that's, that's an easy piece, you know, easy piece to do that. That's a sad thing, too, because people see this, even, you know, but they don't, they see it as like, um, mythical because it's in scripture that they believe in of course the bible is made by man and mm -hmm. all this stuff and you know they don't take it to heart that this is actual uh, biblical history that mm -hmm. happened you know uh, accounts that happen in regards to the record of, uh, of god's record of showing that he's interceded for us so many times mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying so it's like they they under they What's the word? Not undermine, but like they, they minimize it. Mm -hmm. They, they, you know, because they don't what they don't believe in what they don't see. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. So, do you think God or Jesus um, suffer when something bad happened to us? Yeah, I mean, let's read Luke. 1941 to 44. Luke 1941 to 44. Is everybody there? Yeah. Okay, Bill is asking me if he can ask me a really hard question. Well, um, let me see, uh, Bill. I can give you a really, really good answer then. <laughs> Uh, 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 Johnny, can you give I'll him the mic? Her. Okay. Okay. So, if you were um, not a Christian, I was not a. I if was you, if you were not a believer, one. yeah, and somebody told you that that uh, you know God showed His love by warning the Christians so they could get out of Jerusalem, so no Christians died. And all the Jews died, you know, only Jews died. <laughs> How is that God showing love? Didn't God love the Jews? 
right? If, if God really loved, why didn't he stop the Roman army from coming in and killing everybody? Well, I guess you have to go back to the Garden of Eden, you know. I think if he, the Lord, and the, this is a biblical answer, okay? The Lord doesn't want you sacrifices. He wants for you to obedi- obey. Obedience is key to please God. Without obedience, okay, you cannot please God. So if, if I'm not obedient, then God will send the Romans to come kill me? Well, no. The Lord is going to tell you what's going to happen to you if you're not obedient. If you kill someone, you're going to be going to jail. Okay? It is... Um, it is... Um, if you're not obedient to the Lord, you are digging your own grave. Okay? So it's not God doing it. You're it's, inherently obedient to Satan if you're not obedient to God. Uh, you have a choice, you know? I mean, you have a choice, you know? Yeah, and I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate. No, no, that's unquote, fine, Bill. Just because I, I think that's important for us to think about. We think about God's love. But from people from a different point of view, they might see that differently, right? It's well, hard to talk about God's love when all the Jews get killed, right? So I just think it's important that we remember that and take a bigger view than this one action, you know, of, of Rome destroying Jerusalem that day or that couple of years that it took. Um, and then remember that, Evil is real. It exists. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and it, it does things. And, and so it's it just helping us remember that and take mm-hmm. a, big, a big look at it, not just the small thing. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, it, it's not the small thing because if you're in a plane and you're a Christian and the plane crashes, you're going to die, you know? I mean, whatever it is, you know, I mean, it may be a malfunctioning engine or whatever, you know, but the key here is eternal life, okay? For, for us, you know, I might die right now coming out and then it's going to be raining. Maybe I'm going to sleep and fall and crack my head. But, but if that happens to me, you know, I'm okay. I, I know, I mean, well, no, I'm okay. I mean, I'm dead, you know, but, but I know in my heart I'm going to see Jesus again, you know? I mean, and because... I, I, I obey him, the more, you know, try to please him all the time. Because, I mean, everybody's a sinner, other than that, God wouldn't come, you know. I mean, all of us are, 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 are shortfalls. But, I mean, I think it, the bottom line and the great controversy is who are you going to worship? The world of God. And if you die worshiping God, you are ahead of the game. You know, you know that you're going to, that's the hope that we have, you know. And if you die worshiping the, the world, then I think that you are in real trouble, you know. And, you know, everything in the Bible from the very beginning, you know, when you encompass everything, it does make sense, you know. I mean, you know, it does make sense, all the things that it has happened. So, Okay. Just a related thought. I'm so appreciating this conversation. Um, If I understand correctly, the the Christians were able to flee because they heeded the warning that they had been given. Mm -hmm. And so when they saw the signs, they had a choice to make. And the choice they made gave them um, the the safety of of going elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm thinking of the question that Bill posed. And so then the Jews that chose not to to listen, in God's mercy, I feel that they had an opportunity to also see the behavior of others. Mm-hmm. And we don't know how that impacted their hearts. If it could have been a last minute realization of, oh, I should have listened, or I did err in this way of thinking, and this is the truth. And, and so 
who knows what they thought in the end. But the, the promise is that if we do believe and, and recognize uh, the love of God, we have uh, salvation. And then, as you pointed out, it, so we perish here, but we have eternal life mm -hmm. in him. And I love the example that you gave about, let's go back to the beginning. I feel that, sadly, that was the same situation that Eve found herself in. Had she heeded what uh, God had told them, she would have made a different choice. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it, ultimately, we have that freedom yeah. to choose. And, you know, would you mind reading uh, Jeremiah 42.6 to answer Bill's uh, question? <laughs> Jeremiah 42.6. Mm -hmm. Whether it is favorable or unfavorable, we will obey the Lord our God, to whom we are sending you, so that it will go well with us, for we will obey the Lord our God. Yeah, so uh, it, it boils down to, to obeying, you know? I mean, I mean, obviously faith, having faith, and if you obey, you're going to be at ease, you know? Oh, it's funny because I was in the park, you know, and there was a Korean with a camera like this week, you know? And they, they interviewed me for two or three minutes, you know, and I was just, because I have my dog, you know, my dog's kind of cute, you know, it's a cute dog. And, oh, yeah, yeah, that's your dog, and blah, 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 you know, I says, yeah, 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 yeah. And then we were talking, and he says, well, you know what, you look kind of at peace. What makes you, you know, be at peace? And he goes, well, I'm a Christian. Well, do you rest? And I give an opportunity to say, yeah, you know, the Bible commands us to, to observe one day, and that day is the Sabbath. So, you know, I try to disconnect for everything, not all the time, but, you know, for everything. And remember, no Jesus, no peace. Maybe that's why you see peace on me, you know. So, and they start laughing, you know, but that's okay. But, but I mean, it gave me a chance to, 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 to witness a little bit to them. They said that there's news from Korea, they're going to say in Korea, but I was wearing shorts, glasses, you know, so I wasn't, I wasn't fully prepared for the interview, it wasn't the part, you know. But, but it was, you know, and, and, and I think that's what Jesus wants, you know. At the very end, he is a God of love, and he's going to give opportunity to all people to listen to his voice. And if he, you want to hear it, that's fine. If you don't want to pay attention, but that's you, do you. I mean, the voice is going to be there. Jesus, when he, when in Matthew and Luke, when he, he was two days before he was crucified. So by that time, he already entered Jerusalem, you know, saying, hey, Hosanna. So people knew about Jesus. And they really didn't want to uh, uh, believe in, you know, believe in him. And that's why, you know, and he was sad. He was weeping and that when he says, you know, oh, you know, he, he, he was crying, Jesus. I mean, you can see that it was a heartbroken thing for him, knowing what's going to happen to them because they didn't believe. That, yeah, I mean, all of us are his children, you know, for God so loved the world, you know. And it's, it's our choice, you know, it's our choice. You're not going to. Hey, you know, go to church. No, no. I mean, I, they did it with me when I was little. Maybe that's why I went away, you know. And, oh, you know, boom, you know, they all, all you know. No, 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 no. That, that wasn't the way to, to teach about Jesus, guys, the way it, my grandma used to say, you know. So, so we covered when Satan attacks, God protects. Okay. Now we're going to cover when Satan prosecutes, God expands. Okay, and we're going to look. Do you recall a hero of faith that he was persecuted? Elijah. Elijah was persecuted by King Ahab and, King, and Queen Jezebel. This is in 1 Kings 17, 8 to 15. Do you remember if Elijah was a good witness when he was being prosecuted? He was, he, there, were times. there were times that, you know, but yeah, most of the time he was uh, in a cave and so on. But, but he was able to go 
to the city of Tyre and Sidon, you know. That was a pagan city, you know. First Kings 17, A15. You know, these two cities, two cities then he went, it was not a very religious places. They were pagan. Being persecuted is not a good thing. Clean and leave everything isn't very comfortable for anyone. But the message of salvation was given to them too. Okay. Let's uh, let's let's just read a little bit of First Kings seventeen a fifteen. You want to read, Philip? Sure. Say. Okay. You said First Kings seventeen eight through fifteen. Yeah. <clears throat> Then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. So he, he went to Zarephath. When he, came into, when he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from, from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah t had told her, so there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. She said to Elijah, What do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying, and laid him on the, his bed. Okay, okay. Okay, this is Elijah talking about God. The God you know, he mentioned there God, and he mentioned that he will provide so the lady was ready to, to prepare the last meal and die with his son, with her son, because they were poor. They didn't have anything else. So Elijah mentioned God and says, you know, go ahead and do it, you know. Then the son gets very sick and die, okay. You would think, you would think that just the fact that the widow saw then the, the flow and the oil never finish, you know. And he, she recognizes as man of God, you know. But that itself is a miracle. It's, 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 um, it's done by God, and she acknowledged the fact, you know. So now the son dies. And what I've, you know, she feels cursed because of the man of God, you know. What do you have done to my son, you know, he, he, he he dies. But let us read First King 17, we were there, 20 to 24. See what happens, what the end. Okay. Some 20 to 24, okay? Mm -hmm. oh, 17, 20. 20 to 24. 20 to 44? Okay, no. First King 17, mm -hmm. 20 to 24. Okay. Where are you? Okay, then he cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, have you brought tragedy even on this this widow I am saying, um, staying with, uh, by causing her son to die? Then he stretched him out, stretched him himself out on the boy three times, and cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, let this boy's life. Returned to him. The Lord heard 
uh, Elijah uh, cried and, and the boy's life returned to him and he lived. Eli Elijah picked, him, picked up the child and carried him down from the room into the house. He gave him to his mother and said, look, your son is alive. Then the woman said to Elijah, now I know that you are a man of God and, and that the Lord of, and, and the word of the Lord from your mouth is true. Okay, so see, do you think uh, he witnessed to the lady, to the widow? And you think the widow was kept it to herself or she tell everybody there what Elijah did to, to her? Probably shared everything. So Elijah was being persecuted, but the Lord expand, you know what I mean? Expand the message to, to people too. And that happened, you know, listen, God's people always have been persecuted, uh, persecuted people. And the book of Revelation tell us whom is the persecutor? Who is the persecutor, guys, here? Let's go to Revelation 12, 4 to 6. Who wants to read Revelation 12, 4 to 6? Okay, go ahead, please. Revelation 12, 4 through 6? Yes. Its tail swept the third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. So who is the person? Who's the dragon? The enemy, Satan, okay? Always Satan persecuted. God did the same thing with Elijah. He expanded the message, okay? After, and, and you know, and who is the woman? The church. And the church is going to be saved? Yeah. He says there in Revelation, you know. So our church is going to be saved, even at the, the very end of times. Are we going to suffer? Yeah, we're going to be suffering, you know. But, you know, and that reminds me, after the ascension of Christ, the disciples were threatened, they were jailed, they were persecuted, and even killed the disciples, okay? And what happened to Satan? Try to keep everything in bottle? It didn't happen. It backfired him because the message expanded through the world by the disciples, See, he wanted not to, to have expansion, but expand it, you know. You, how many people in the day of Pentecost what, was baptized? 3,000, you know. So, so the devil wanted to, 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 to uh, persecute, persecute the disciples, and what happened? The message expands. So, and in some cases, like the case of Saul of Tarsus, you know, he even, Saul of Tarsus, he even participated in the killing of the stoning of Stephen, okay? He ended being converted, you know? And Paul, everybody knows that he is the apostle of the Gentiles. So he was not only confined to the Jews, the message anymore. He was confined to the whole world, to the whole world, the Gentiles, and so on. And that is the point. When Satan persecutes, God expands the message, which is so, so cool, you know. He tried to put a cap, and it doesn't work. Everything expands, you know. So this is, uh, this is so amazing, guys. I mean, when you start analyzing everything that we have covered, you know, the last thing that we're going to cover, okay, is... When Satan destroys, God restores. Okay. The devil not only causes wars and persecution, he is behind all mental and spiritual illness. Jesus clearly, when referring to Satan as the thief, uh, as a thief, 
And let us read John 10.10. 10. John 10.10. 10. John 10. 10, 10. 10, okay. Uh, the thief comes out only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it uh, to the full. Okay, yeah. Satan is described as a thief. And Jesus, what did Jesus do in his ministry? In his ministry? Healing, liberating, you know, restoring. That's what he did, Jesus. When the devil destroys, God restores. The COVID of 2019 wasn't the first pandemic, you know, the first pandemic that we have in the world. Uh, the record is, and we also have one in 160 after the, uh, after, after, you know, uh, and 265 AD. Two devastated pandemics ravaged the world these plagues kill uh, hundreds of thousands of people leaving the entire towns and cities with almost no uh, inhabitants there. But Christians step forward and care for thousands of people. And many Christians lost their lives caring for others. But eventually, thousands of hundreds of thousands in the Roman Empire became believers in Jesus, you know, after these pandemics, seeing Christians caring for other ones. You know, and that reminds me the story of the Good Samaritan, you know, of the Samaritan, you know, the priest didn't want to help the other people, you know, and the two guys didn't want to help him, but someone helped him, you know, and, and that's Jesus. He always, always there for us, you guys. Mm -hmm. Believe me, believe me, trust me in this one, you know, so. And, and, in this great controversy, our enemy wants to destroy the image of a loving God. We already established that, you know, he wants to tarnish and wants to um, implant the idea that God is indifferent to evil, but it's the enemy uh, that generates the evil. It's not God, you know, it's the enemy. Remember, God, what did he says in the six days when the man was created and the whole creation was there? It was very good. Amen. It was very, I mean, he didn't say, he said, good, and the other ones, when we finished the creation, he says, it was very good, yeah. okay? So he didn't, you know, he didn't create the evil, you know? It is the evil who is doing all of these things. He just, just to summarize, to land the plane, to, to land the plane, like Pastor says, you know, so we're almost there. He used Joseph brothers to harm him. But God, God used these circumstances to save lives. You know, remember the brothers of Joseph when they throw him in? What happened with Joseph? We cover at the very beginning. He saved so many lives, telling the, the Pharaoh the seven years of, of, of abundance and the seven years of famine, so they can prepare. He used Titus to destroy J Jerusalem, but God used these circumstances to show his love for his people, okay? saving Christians too. And <clears throat> this is the last thing that I'm gonna cover. He used Jews and Romans to persecute, but God used these circumstances to spread the message of salvation. See? I used suffering attacks, persecution, sickness today. It's not God. Just let him show let, just let him show you his real image, you know. It will turn your tears into victory. This, that's what I got for this lesson, you know. All of us have problems. All of us have challenges, you know. But remember, God, uh, the enemy destroys. But God builds, you know. God builds. Let us, just to finalize, let us read... Isaiah 41.10, and with that, we're going to close the class today. Isaiah 41.10. You there, Penny? 
And let's, let's pay attention to what Isaiah is saying here. Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Amen. So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Thank you for this lesson, Father. Thank you the knowing that you're always going to be there protecting us, Father, regardless of the outcome. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys.